The Jets 2024 season is about to kick off as rookies report to training camp, but there's a huge cloud hanging over one Jets drive, and his name is Devontae Adams. Let's get into all the rumors and storylines today on JetCast. Welcome to another episode of JetCast. As always, I'm Pat. That's Ray. The rookies are reporting today to training camp. The, fi- the the season really is officially starting today, I feel like. And a lot of these guys that are coming in, I think, need to have some sort of impact on this team. And for me, the player that I'm going to be paying most attention to and the player that I think is really has to have an impact is Malachi Corley. Now, there was some drama with him not signing his deal. I don't know what that was all about. Those contracts are slotted, so I don't understand what the language was. Maybe it was that injury offset thing, the thing we dealt with Sam Darnold a few years ago where he didn't show up. Um, But Corley, I think, is probably the most important rookie for my money out of this draft class. And that's really because the wide receiver room is, is pretty thin, if you ask me. Um, God forbid we lose Wilson. God forbid we use, we lose Williams. All of a sudden we're looking at Lazard being our wide receiver too. And I do not like that, especially after what we saw, uh, last year with his malaise towards the end of the season, his, his seemingly not caring from what, what I, what I saw. I'm his abilities are his abilities. he, he does have an issue where he does get the drops every now and then, but um, that attitude I was not happy with. Now, I, I can kind of understand Lazard's attitude with Aaron going down and having to deal with Zach Wilson. I get it, but, I mean, the, the optics were not great. So I really want to see Malachi Corley step up. I would really love to see him um possibly take that wide receiver three role away from Lazard if he can. Um, he calls himself the yak King. He's a big kid. I think they're going to put him in, 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 in the slot in very, you know, certain situations, try to get him balls underneath and let him run with it. That's that his, that's his bread and butter, his yards after the catchers is bread and butter. And I, he has to, has to pan out for this team. Cause again, we have Williams coming off of an ACL and, I don't think he's going to be fully ready um, week one. I think there's still going to be some rehab going into there. But if Malachi Corley can come on and he can actually uh, show that he he can take over that wide receiver three role, I think they would be happy to give it to him. Now, let me ask you this. When you're, th- when you're thinking about Malachi Corley, do you think that he's day one going to be our number three? And I'm only saying that because I understand that it was a deep wide receiver draft. The Jets supposedly had him pretty high on their board. But it's very rare you see a late second, early third round type of player immediately start on a, uh, you know, let's just say Super Bowl contending team. We saw even just a couple of years ago, uh, it took a little while for Elijah Moore to get out the gates. I don't want to bring up the pass receivers and Stephen Hill and Denzel Mims, but there were similar feelings in regard to them as wide receivers who step in on day one. So that's the only thing that makes me nervous. We hear out of coming out of college that he's got quick feet, but he needs to work on the proper footwork and his route running ability. And it's very hard to polish that in just one off season. So if I'm the Jets, I'm continuing to scour the free agent market. You might not get a big name, obviously, but Maybe we could bring in another veteran because I don't know if Brownlee is ready to step up into that role this year. We hear rave reviews out of OTAs with him, but that's OTAs. There's no pads. There's no defense. A quarterback could sit back in the pocket as long as possible. So that's a player that I expect to step up. Maybe we see Brownlee actually get the first shot in regard to the first crack at the wide receiver three position. You talked about a big name. Do you want to go there? Do you want to go talk ahead. about it? The rumors are okay. out there. 
I mean, for me, where there's smoke, there's fire. And mm-hmm. there has been enough talk, um, obviously, from Aaron on the golf course, whether he was talking about playing with him, uh, playing golf with him or not. There's talk straight from Devontae Adams's mouth where he goes, I would if it, if anybody if I was going to reunite with anybody, it would be with Aaron Rodgers. The, if you very watch, weird if to you, say that. I know, but if you watch the full interview, he, he then kind of backtracks it where he talks about like he's on the Raiders and he and, and he's committed to the Raiders, which is all fine, well, and good. We know that players talk. I would love to see those text messages between them, but you know players <laughs> talk, and I do not think it's going to happen now um, just because the money situation is just not great right now, but if – Going into the trade deadline, if the Jets are six and two, and the Raiders could potentially have one or two wins at that point, because let's face it, they're relying on Aiden O'Connell, really. Mm. Um, do the Raiders decide to clean house? Do the Raiders decide to reset? I could see it happening. And if they're asking for a first round pick at the trade deadline, I think I'm pulling that trigger. It's going to be a, you could, you a have to t- price, you have man. to assume you have to assume that if you're getting someone like him you have to assume that you're going to make a deep run because you are you have a winning record at that point you are going all in it will be a high first round pick okay it's not going to be it's not going to be a top 15 pick like we've had the last decade and a half whatever how long the hell it's been okay right if aaron stays upright and aaron stays healthy I think they may actually pull the trigger and get him in here and and push all their chips to the table. I don't uh, it's not crazy to think it would happen because you have a very short window with an MVP quarterback. It could happen and it could happen especially like we just talked about with injuries. If that wide receiver room gets thin and they're still winning games regardless, you know, regardless of of those injuries, it's going to happen. I really feel like it's going to happen. And the money situation is going to suck. They'll ha- they'll be pushing money down the road. You may have issues paying guys later on because of what you did with Devonta Adams. <clears throat> but if it gets you a ring. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Right. It's still worth it. Come trade deadline, if the Jets are rolling and the Raiders are going nowhere, I see it happening. It's not going to happen right now, but I could see it happen. You have Boomer Esiason on WFAN saying he sees it happening. You have Dan Orlovsky saying he sees it happening. You have Aaron Rodgers saying he would love to play with him again. You have Devontae Adams saying the only person I would ever reunite with is Aaron Rodgers. I, where there's smoke, there's fire. They've been talking. You have to assume they've been talking. You even had Brees Hall come, you know, he was answering a question about it, but you still have Brees Hall talking about how, you know, I think he said something like, you know, we've been talking. So Mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to happen. That's my two cents. I don't think it's going to happen now. I think it happens at the trade deadline. If it's going to happen. And situations need to arise for that to happen, but I, I think it's going to happen. It's like basketball. Like <laughs> when you hear players talk about going to other teams, like if you're a Raiders fan, wouldn't you be livid right now heading into the year? But I also look at it like this. But who? But and if you're a Raider, but if you're a Raiders fan and you're not going anywhere, right? Right. Right. But right. But you also got. Like, one thing Jeff fans seem to forget, and I'm not saying Jeff fans in general, but just fans in general, just yeah. because Devontae Adams wants to come here does not mean that the Raiders will be shipping him here. Because if he becomes right. available and they're willing to eat that massive dead cap hit midseason, yep. it drops his salary, it's going to put every playoff team in, 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 the, you know, in the mix. Not just the Jets. It's not like Devontae could say, I'm only going to go play for the Jets. That's not how it's going to work. So 
And remember, we're already, I don't want to say bereaved of assets, but we've already given them up, some of them. Like, we're going to be paying probably a second-round pick for Hassan Reddick. So, you're t- it will better be almost but a guarantee that we're going to a Super Bowl because you are trading a large part of your future for this year and probably the following year. But that's one thing I want to touch on, too. Devontae Adams' contract kind of actually does work for the Jets in this scenario because they could pay Garrett after the following year. So once Devontae's done, you pay Garrett. Mike Williams probably wouldn't be coming back, but you know we'll figure that out down the road. I think a lot of it's going to depend on how this team plays the first four to five weeks because if they're clicking – and Mike Williams looks really good, there may not be a reason to bring Devontae in. You might want to go in in another direction. Maybe there's a right tackle open on the market if Morgan Moses isn't producing. Maybe my biggest fear is that we're so thin up the middle on defense. Kinlaw, Williams, and that's pretty much it in my eyes. We don't have that big run stuffer. Our team's taking advantage of us against the run. Does somebody else get injured? How are our linebackers looking? I know everybody loves C.J. Mosley, but he's another year older. You know, that we have to take that into fa- to a factor. And think about our safety position. It's, probably, it's obviously the weakest position on our team. You have a guy like Chuck Clark who's not, not really good at covering tight ends or anybody at that matter. He's, he's more, more of a box, box safety. safety. Yep. And Tony Adams who's a free safety. So I think like – I don't want to say Devontae would be a luxury pick, a luxury trade, but I don't want to trade for Devontae just because Aaron Rodgers says, that's my friend, go get him. I think that would be negligence for the Jets to do something like that. And my biggest fear, my biggest fear sitting here as a Jets fan is Salah and Douglas know their asses on the hot seat. And if they don't win this year, not saying they have to win a Super Bowl, but if they don't win this year, there's a good chance they're not back. 500 is not going to cut it. A game over 500 is not going to cut it. They have to minimally get into the playoffs and probably win a playoff game. And that's a really hard task. And I, and I am scared to death that Joe Douglas, who's already started to sacrifice our future, think about it. We got – zero for Bryce Huff. And now we have to trade a second round pick just to bring his replacement in. And yes, Reddick's a better player, but he's not exorbitantly better than Huff. So you got nothing for Huff. You give up the second round pick for Reddick. And now we're going to trade a first round pick for Devontae Adams. We're not only losing our future, but we're getting older. You're bringing in two guys who are 30, 30 plus. You got to remember that that Reddick pick is, is 2020. Six. Six, I believe. Yeah, it's it's pushed out a little bit. And he only it only becomes a second round pick if he plays sixty five percent of the snaps, which is possibly he may not get that with the rotation that they have at edges. So I wouldn't bank on that too much. Um I do think, you know, going back to your point about like the defensive line, I do think come trade Ted line, they'll get somebody in here if they're rolling. Because he because <laughs> Douglas has that extra third round pick in his back pocket from the draft that he got, I think from Miami. So we got two thirds. So that, 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 that's a valuable pick that can be used at a trade line trade deadline to get someone in here to help the team along. If they're rolling, I think that's the plan. Um, But if situations arise where they are rolling and all of a sudden you have an injury in the, in, 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 in the wide receiver room, it's, it's possible. They pull the trigger. If, the Raiders make him available if the Raiders are willing to take that cap hit. Big ifs. They have some sort of now. There is a con, there's there's a bit of a contract out next year, but you know that's future Jets, future Pat, and future Ray discussions. And let's um, not forget about let's not forget about the running back position. That's another thing I wanted to bring up. Yeah, that's what I wanted to we, move on to was was running backs. Um, we are all assuming, yeah. just assuming, that Allen and Isaiah Davis are going to be good running backs. We thought that we thought last year coming in with Izzy, he'd be good. Michael Carter was okay as a running back, but 
Behind Brees Hall, our most experienced back, is Izzy Abanaconda, who is going to likely get cut at training camp. That's one thing. That, that much that, experience. I, I, I would. I mean, that's uh, uh, the experience level between like twenty three uh, carries. Uh, between, right. It, it it's negligible as far as I'm concerned. You basically have three rookies behind. Right behind Brees. That's yeah, what it's, it's concerning. Th- that's the battle that every Jeff fan should be watching in training camp. Who is separating themselves? Because they weren't drafted that far apart. Davis had a ton of yards. I believe almost 3,000 yards in the last two years uh, in college. A ton of touchdowns. But they're both similar backs, too. Allen probably has a little bit better long speed when I watch their tape. But if you look at them, they're both big bulldozer types of backs where – Maybe Brees Hall starts the game the first half, really use him the first half and as you wear down a defense and then you bring in a fresh back who is 235 pounds in Allen and then you, you hit the hole with him. I would like to see us potentially bring in a veteran. Maybe that's something that Joe Douglas is c- contemplating because I could see Izzy being on the practice squad and I don't know at the pro level. That, it, that's one thing that – so many fans say, oh, well, in college they were great. There's a ton of great college players. I need to see at the pro level that Davis and Allen know how to pick up the blitz because protecting Aaron Rodgers is so vital. We know Brees could do it, but outside of Brees, we know Izzy cannot do it. And that that's a big factor coming into this season. So I would look for Joe Douglas to start scouring the wire seeing if there's veterans that are let go, maybe bringing them in, maybe not necessarily to compete for a position, a starting position, but to help teach these younger players how to properly identify a blitz, identify identify how to properly pass block for Aaron Rodgers in the backfield because that that is what scares the hell out of me, and I don't hear enough people talking about that. Well, Izzy in college, as far as I know, wasn't really asked to pass block much. Right. Um, Most backs are. Right. Well, well, Braylon was. Mm -hmm. Braylon was. And and just the stature of Braylon, he is a bigger kid. Um, If he can. And and another thing that, that. that you know was talked about at uh, at the mini camp was his ability to catch out of the backfield. If he can, if he can really dial that in and be a good out of the backfield pass catcher, I think he's a shoe in for that for for running back. Totally too. agree. And you're not as as a rookie, you're not asking him to be an every down back. You're asking him to be a change of pace guy. Okay, you're asking him that you know. <laughs> When Brees needs a need, need, needs a blow, he goes off onto this. You know, Braylon comes on and and he can you know he can you know run, run downhill a few times and and give Brees a, a minute there. Um, so you're not asking too much of him, um, but if he can get if he can become that out of the backfield guy, if he can do that pass catching and 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 the the writer that we had on for for Wisconsin was concerned about that. He was concerned about his pass catching abilities out of the backfield. But then all of a sudden he goes to training mini camp and and the writers are saying he he's actually really good out of the backfield. So if he can get that, if if Aaron Rodgers can trust him passing out of the backfield the same way that he should be able to trust Brees Hall because again he let's be real he hasn't actually played games with these guys yet. Um, He's going to be our running back too, and that that's just how it's going to be. Um, Isaiah Davis, Isaiah Davis will he he he'll be the running back three, but I think he's going to play more special teams. If 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 we're being if we're being real, yeah, and he'll only he'll, he'll only get on there if someone goes down. God forbid, knock on wood. It doesn't um, make you nervous that there's not a veteran in here, considering I know. No, I consider he, Brees a veteran. Just, I consider Brees is. Well, no, of course, I of course. I'm playing outside of him. What I'm trying to say is, as a Jeff fan, we saw last year our special teams loves to put the ball on the ground. That is one thing that Braylon Allen did frequently in college. Yeah. So that's. You know, that's another worry. You're dealing with bigger, faster, stronger players who are able to go for the ball more. And if, God forbid, Brees goes down, to me, there's zero proven behind him, not even someone who's a good, secure ball carrier. 
So that's why I, I still want to see them bring in a veteran. If Izzy is not good enough at this time, I'm sure he would go through waivers, and I'm sure we could put him on the practice squad. I'd rather carry an extra back who I know can identify, maybe a little familiar with Rodgers, familiar with the offense. It's it's just a big worry for me. And I think we, we, we have a lot of uh, green and white goggles on because we have Brees Hall and we see all the highlight videos when it comes to these guys coming out of college. But the pro level is a completely different level. And I would like to see them bring in a, uh, a veteran. Uh, so w- w- what about Fashanu? Obviously, you know, the the the, the most, <laughs> the number one, the, the, the first round pick, you know, we haven't even discussed him. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of, a lot of writers and a lot of, us YouTube channel podcaster guys, I think are kind of overlooking him, not really talking about him because he isn't expected to, to play much. He isn't expected to start. Um, he is a fantastic talent as a tackle and he will play at some point this year. He will start a game or two. I think just because of uh, Tyron Smith's history, where do you think he starts first? Do you think he starts on the left side? Or do you think he could potentially outplay Morgan Moses on the right? Well, we heard the rumors coming into camp that he's open to trying to take reps at right tackle, which he never Every has. Every rookie's going to say that. I mean, come on. Every... I know, but also, well, here's the thing. It's easy to say that, but when you have a Hall of Fame left tackle sitting in front of you, if you want to play – you it, it, it better be more than just words. And that's how I see Fashanu being. Maybe he gets a couple of reps at right tackle as well. We'll see. It's a completely different position. So many people think, oh, it's just easy to swap on over. It, it, it's just different. The kickback's different. Everything's different. Your anchoring is different. But yeah. I, he is an elite athlete. One thing that I am very curious to see as the veterans come into camp is – how does he look against a Jermaine Johnson, a McDonald, a Redick? If Quinnen lines up on the outside, how does he look? Because we all know the big stat. He's got a million reps at left tackle, never allowed a sack in his career. I want to see and hear from guys of, of that stature, the, the, the Pro Bowl type players in Jermaine Johnson and Redick. Tell me how he's looking. What does he look like? Would he be ready to step in? immediately if if and when Tyron Smith misses time because it's almost inevitable with this guy. So that's what I'm looking most forward to. I I think that and the running back position are my two things that I'm keen in on this camp because fashano has got all the hype coming out. We all know that. Top-rated tackle. Thought he would be a lock to be a top-10 pick. Got him at eleven. We need to know if he is the real deal and he could step in right away or do the Jets need to look to bring in a more seasoned guy where maybe Fashan will be ready week eight or nine to step in. But I don't want to be finding out what kind of player we have week four if, you know, uh, Smith has to go out for a few snaps. We're throwing this kid in there and – you know, we, we, we don't know anything. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm telling you, this trade deadline is going to be so important for this team. Because I think um, I think they've done enough on the offensive line to keep Aaron Rodgers upright. And that equates to winning games. So I think they're going to have a winning record by the time, training, uh, by the, time uh, the trade deadline comes. And they're going to fill the need somewhere, whether it's on the offensive line, whether it's in the wide receiver room, whether it's in the running back room. You know, when they get a they get a a, a veteran to come in there, I it's going. I can't stress this trade deadline, how important this trade deadline is for this year. It's going to be it. A lot of things are going to go into it. You know where the team is and what they need and who's hurt. Um. It, it, there's going to be rumors flying around everywhere um, that it, it it's going to be a circus <laughs> to, for lack of a better term. So um, the last guy I want to touch on and it's not, I mean, he's sandwiched in between all these picks is Jordan Travis, right? We haven't heard anything, 
anything from any of the writers about him other than like he's still rehabbing his injury. Um, he, He's going to start on the. He's not going to be on the roster, I think, week one. He's going to be on the, the 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 IR, I think. Right. I don't know about that. I heard different. Because if they carry three, if they carry three quarterbacks going into week one, that's going to take away from somewhere else. How does it work now? Is there a different slot for an emergency quarterback? Oh, you know, you're right. I don't know. I don't know enough of the ins and outs of that. I have to look into that to be completely honest with you. Yeah, um, I look into it as well. But I think I mean I don't think he's honest, a guy. I you do not want to see Jordan on. Travis anywhere near. The <laughs> I, if he could, I mean, there are some trouble. rumors that he may be able to get on the field come preseason. I have no idea. I would love to see him, uh, see him move around and 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 play a little bit of preseason if it's possible. But I, I honestly have no idea, and we haven't heard enough. I think from any of the, the writers on how far along he is, if he could, if he could play in the preseason. But let, let's let's be real. If if he is playing or at any point during this season. Um, it's over <laughs> just because that would mean we lost, we lost, both right, nine. we lost one yeah. and two, right? So, um, they might as well just, you know, solid, solid and Douglas could pack their bags at that point, right? Well, think about that. Know. That, Maybe think about how much is riding on Pat. Uh, I'm telling you, God forbid. I would never wish injury on anybody, obviously. But God forbid Rodgers goes down and Tyrod... People forget Tyrod Taylor's an off-the-injured player. If they both go down and we don't win, I think regardless, they're gone. Because they've been here for forever. You can't ignore Joe Douglas's record as a general manager anymore. I mean, he is so on- far below. We could have like 13-win seasons for the next four years and he's still under 500. That's how bad it is. You know, the the biggest knock on Douglas, and we've said this before, is that he 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 missed he missed on quarterback, he missed on left tackle. You can't miss on those two positions and expect to win. Mm-hmm. He's been given a second chance and we'll see at what picking at least left into. tackle. Right, but I, I don't the top fifteen pick, he's gotta be good. He's been ever, Say that again. I said it also depends on what McDonald turns into. I I, I agree. Um, but I I have a hard time seeing, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I can I have a hard time seeing Woody cleaning house if the team goes down the twos because quarterback one and two got injured. You know, know. I think, it's it, I think I mean, what he wants to win. He's been given a lot of promises. Yeah, but well, we all want to win. We we all want to win. And if Aaron Rodgers stays upright, we're winning games. Just because he's Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hear anymore about how his last year in Green Bay was his statistically worst year. I, I don't want to hear about it anymore. He broke his thumb on his throwing hand. Week five against the Giants. And we're going to hold that season against him. And by the way, that season statistically is better than any Jets quarterback has had in since 2015, since that one Luke year with Ryan, Fitz, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, the Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'll take that was, a good season. <laughs> that was a good season. Yeah. Well, the last game sucked, but the... Uh, Look, I mean, I'll take 2022 20, Rodgers on the Packers. I'll take those stats because that's actually a decent quarter. That, that's a, I'll take a middle-of-the-road quarterback on yep. his team. I'll take those yep. numbers because that means with everybody else around him, we're going to the playoffs. I expect more from Aaron Rodgers. And it's a little concerning that he hasn't yet yeah, kind of played in – yeah. He, he hasn't played in in a, de- in a in a long time, mm-hmm. but I don't know why everybody keeps forgetting that he broke his hand and played the yeah, rest of the season on his throwing hand. Doesn't it, fit the narrative. It, no, it doesn't fit the narrative. It doesn't fit the narrative. 
And there's nobody one wants talk, to nobody wants to re- talk about that. I'm trying to remember which reporter said it. We sort of believe yesterday, but they were saying if if Aaron Rodgers plays like a top ten quarterback, the Jets have a legitimate chance to win a Super Bowl. That's how good this roster is. Any 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 impartial person looking at the roster can clearly see that. Mm-hmm. But then you have clowns like Nick Wright saying that there's no weapons on the Jets roster. Yeah, Nick Wright's a Clown basketball show. guy to me. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Ray? No, I'll just say this. If this season means anything, hope to see you all at uh, at MetLife that final week in our suite. So I'm going to have a link at the bottom of this video. Uh, we're having an event at MetLife. Uh, it's going to be the last game of the season. I know the, the date and time is kind of to be determined by the NFL. But there's going to mm-hmm. be a link at the bottom uh, in the description of this this video. You click on it, and you can sign up for uh, sign up to get a notification for when the tickets drop. The tickets going to drop August 10th at noon. And if you sign up uh, uh, with that link, you'll get notified immediately. So you don't need to remember that the tickets are going to drop. There's only going to be uh, 60 seats available, 60 tickets that we're going to be selling. It's in the flight deck, which is a level 100 suite inside MetLife. It is heated, so you'll be in a heat. It's an indoor outdoor <laughs> seat outside, seats inside, then there's kind of a heated section on the inside. So you, it'll be a January game. I think we're going to be moonwalking into the playoffs, so it's going to be a party in, at Hope MetLife. So. That's my that I, you can put me on record. I think we're going into the playoffs, and I think we're going to have a party in MetLife in the flight deck. But it is heated. Um, January game, you'll be warm, one hundred level. The ticket's going to be two thirty nine ninety nine. You're not going to find a price like that better for a one hundred level suite. Tickets drop August tenth at noon. Click on the link below, and you'll get a text or an email. However, you sign up notifying you when the tickets drop first 10 people that use the code flight deck at checkout will get 10 percent off their tickets that's crazy that means you're getting a ticket for like a little over 200 bucks for a suite <laughs> this is we we're, we we want to have a good time with everybody and um you know we want we want uh we want to have a we want to have a good time in that suite um yeah, this is and, and just so yeah, so it's the same suite that Gotham City Crew does all the time. So Gotham City Crew has the suite for the home opener. Um I'm going, Ray. I know you're probably going with me. We're gonna go in the flight deck for, for the, that home opener, and we jetcast are gonna be doing the season finale. So um yeah, click on that link below. And you'll get notified when the tickets drop. You got to buy them quick because they're going to go quick. So yep. that's all I have. Thanks, guys, for uh, hanging out with us. Um, we're going to have some more content coming out as training camp goes on. Uh, hopefully, I, I want to get the, the writers back in here, back on the show, talking about what they're seeing maybe halfway through training camp. Um, I, I hope to have Nick Faria on. I hope to have Connor Hughes back on. Uh, and he can tell us, you know, those guys can tell us really what they're seeing with their eyes. We are going to also be going to training camp. We're going to have some content coming out for when we go. Um, and uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, little bell button, and you'll get notified when uh, when new videos drop. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Talk to you uh, next time. Go Jets.